Well, household budgets have taken another hit following the Reserve Bank's cash rate hike of 50 basis points. This is the fourth jump in as many months and all major banks are expected to pass on the increase. Uh, coupled with rising living costs, it's putting more pressure on households for sure. So what does it all mean for the average family? The founder of Pivot Wealth and author Ben Nash is back to talk all things finance. G'day. Uh, we knew this was coming, didn't we? But how will it affect the hip pockets of, of homeowners? Yeah, well, look, I think it it's might hard. be the first time that economists have ever agreed on anything, but it seems that they, they were all uh, in lockstep on, on this one. doesn't make it any easier, though, obviously, for, for mortgage holders that are now feeling the pain and mm. uh, yeah it's it, it comp compounds as you say four months 1.75 percent total interest rate it's it's a big jump on a million dollar mortgage that's about a thousand dollars a month in extra repayments and it seems like we've still got a little ways to go yeah when you say quickly 1.75 doesn't sound a lot until you see it spelled out you know, in the figures months. it's mm -hmm. it's a lot yeah. absolutely and it's the fastest uh, rate of increase in about three decades yeah. um, it's hard to say what will happen in the future of course we're all trying to do that but how is there a point where the RBA goes okay we've achieved this now what we set out to achieve is there a number you've got in your mind where this might just stop the pain stops well inflation is the main concern there yeah. that it has gone quite uh, aggressive on, on that side and that's why the RBA is coming in. So I think as soon as inflation starts coming under control then we'll start to see an easing. Ultimately the RBA would like to have interest rates at a more neutral or, or positive setting so that the economy grows because yeah. that's that's good for them but they need to see it get there. I think that there are some external pressures on inflation so particularly the Ukraine-Russia conflict that uh, is pushing up energy prices, manufacturing costs, freight costs. They are starting to ease now thankfully we're seeing a bit of that so those things could push inflation down and mean that there's less uh, aggression there from the RBA but they're still tipping rates to be around the three percent bit of a split between CBAs down as low as 2.6 percent they're yep. forecasting as a peak others up to about 3.2 percent by early next year. Ben so homeowners there's not a lot they can do about all this that, that's beyond their control what is in their control and what can they do mm. to try and alleviate you know any financial stress or pressure that they may be feeling? Well, I think the first thing is that there's there's good deals out there. Different banks are competitive in different spaces at different points in time that they might want uh, investment property uh, customers or own home customers or variable rate or fixed rate. So looking at whatever that is for you, looking at what's on in the in the market and doing that regularly to making sure to make sure that you're getting the sharpest deal possible for your circumstances is a good one. Also preparing yourself, if, particularly for those people that have fixed rates that are coming off, they're going to see a pretty considerable jump mm -hmm. when that happens. So starting to budget and prepare for that now, it's going to make your life a little bit easier than when you're forced into it because you're going to have to make it work. Fixed rates are an interesting mm. proposition for people at the mm. moment. The variable has worked for such a long time, but we must be getting close to that point where you go, let's lock this down, right? Well, what do you think? You'd, you'd think that, except fixed rates at the moment are, are in the 5% sort of range, so there is quite are we a, going there, a, ben? Are we going there? a big premium. Well, look, they're talking about their cash rate being around 3%, then there's a bit of a margin from the bank, so variable might potentially get closer to that for a period of time. However, if inflation comes back, then it seems like the variable rate could recover quite quickly. There's a bit, a bit of more of a talk around that at the moment. So. For me personally, and we never know because we don't have a crystal ball, but I probably wouldn't fix rates unless you knew that your budget was so tight that you would be in serious trouble if it did keep going up, just to protect yourself a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But I think if you ride the variable wave, we'll probably see it easing next year, and then that will come off. Ben, a finance guy once told me about fixed rates. He mm. said, the bank is never going to do anything to harm itself. Meaning, why would they give you a U-Butt fixed rate mm. at, at their detriment? So yeah, it's always kind of stuck with me, which is kind of agreeing with what you're saying. Yes. I know I, I, it's a risk. This is not financial advice, but it's kind of a risk either way, isn't it? Yes, Do you know I what I mean? Like, so you... Yeah, well, the banks have teams of people that are trying to price their fixed rates in a way so that they make pretty much the same amount of money that they do uh, from a variable rate. Now, they yeah. don't always get it right because it's a very difficult thing to predict, but uh, they're not trying to, I think, be, like profiteer from fixed rates necessarily or trying to do you any favours, yes. definitely. So I think it's hard, but like when we saw in, in COVID where the fixed rates were really low, at sometimes below 2%, you say, well, that's a great deal. It's unlikely to go much lower. Okay, great you can lock it in, give yourself some certainty and then uh, off you go. But at the moment, in this sort of market, it's a, it's a more difficult proposition. Yeah. yeah, and for our viewers at home, just check with your financial experts <laughs> before following the advice of Kylie Gillies. <laughs> uh, there is some good news, Ben. Uh, we keep saying there's some good news. What is the good news? Because it doesn't feel like it's good at the moment. 
Well, I think that with interest rates increasing, people that have cash savings are getting a bit more uh, from, from an interest income perspective. Macquarie yeah. came out yesterday and they've immediately passed on that uh, half a percent rate increase for deposit products. At the same time, they've, they've increased it on their mortgage products. But yeah. for people that have cash savings, they're getting more than nothing, which is what we've been used to in the recent past. Mm. Uh, for bonds and, and more defensive investments, which are in a lot of super funds and particularly for retirees with more defensive allocations, they're mm. getting a bit more of a return, so that's good. And I think for a lot of younger people that are still yet to get into the property market, they're talking about the fact that it's the uh, potentially the worst conditions in, in a number of years for selling properties over the next three months. But the flip side of that is that if you're buying property, it's the best conditions that you're going to get in yeah. some years to get into the market. And having seen what we've seen in the markets over the last little bit, many people were either priced out or a little bit apathetic in the, in the rises that yeah. uh, now I think is the time that there's a opportunity some, there. Some good news in there. All right, somewhere. Uh, ben, thank you very much for that. Um, we appreciate Thanks, that. Uh, Kyle, can I just ask yes. you a question? Um, you're the Nigerian prince who gave you that financial <laughs> advice, is he available to talk to all of us or is that an ex are you an exclusive? I just role? think the whole issue of fixed rate is what everybody is talking about. Absolutely. So I thought I'd just throw in my 1.85 cents worth. <laughs> Give it to you by your Nigerian one, prince one who, yeah, yeah, thank you. Soon thank you. we